That sounds mass channel, and I'm going to answer questions now from this October, November 2023 um, paper from Cambridge AS level. This is the 9709 syllabus. This is paper one, variant three, and this is pure mathematics. Now, I have set this quest this paper as a mock exam for my students, and I'm answering each question one by one and i'm going through some of the mistakes that students have made in this paper okay so that you know i can explain having keeping in mind the type of mistakes that students have made in in the questions here so you know you guys can learn from mistakes of each other so this question number one is about um, a curve is such that its gradient at the point x y is given by dy dx equals x minus 3x to the power of negative a half. It is given that the curve passes through the point 4, 1. Find the equation of the curve. All right, so now we're told that this is the gradient function for the curve. We want to find the equation of the curve. I'm going to show you two ways of answering this question. Now, the standard way, which I'm going to show you first, is such that first of all you say okay we know the gradient function dy dx it's x minus 3x to the power of negative a half now when you copy down the question copy it down very carefully one of the students marking this paper he wrote this over here as plus 3x to the power of minus a half well in fact no he actually he wrote it down as um 3x to the power of positive a half something like that whatever he did he wrote down the sign, one of the, these two signs incorrectly, and that, of course, led to mis, you know, the rest of the question having wrong answers. So maybe method, method marks he would get, but definitely marks will be lost if you do that. So be very careful not to just throw away marks by copying these, uh, you know, question incorrectly. Copy it down correctly, right? So now what we want to do now is we want to find what y is in terms of x. So we want to solve this. We want to find the equation of the curve. They want y equals the answer, you know, in terms of y equals something x. They don't want to, they want to have the dy dx there. So we were going from the gradient function to the original function, so we have to integrate. So if I integrate dy dx, I get y. And if I integrate this, I've got to integrate x minus 3x to the power of negative a half. I've got to integrate this with respect to x. So integrating this, you have to take the power, add one to it, and then divide the whole expression by the new power. So if you have x, it actually means x to the power of 1. So if you add 1 to the power, you're going to get 2. So it's x to the power of 2, then divided by 2. Okay, and you have 3x to the power of negative a half. So you've got negative 3x. If you add to negative a half, if you add 1, it's like adding 2 over 2, which is going to give you positive a half, and then you divide by a half. And then very, very important, you must write at the end plus c. Because when you differentiate, if I went from here to there, I would get this. But then there could have been a number, a constant that became zero when I integrated, when I differentiated, sorry. So you have to write plus c there. And now in this particular question, because they told us that it passes through a particular point, we know that it passes through the point 4, 1. Okay, we can use that information to find the value of c. So what I can say is, if I've got 4, 1, now another place, well, before we actually do that, before I use this, this is another thing that somebody did wrong as well, they left this answer in this form. You should try to simplify it as much as possible before the last, you know, at least by the end of the question, when you write your final statement down, in simplified form. So this can be left as it is, or if you want, you can write it as a half x squared, Okay, or you can write it like this if you want. Both of them are fine. But you cannot leave this in this form. You can't leave it as 3 divided by a half. You can't have a fraction within a fraction. This must be simplified. It can't be left like this. And some students did that, or one particular student did that. So what you need to do is, you need to understand when you're dividing something by a fraction, so if I'm doing 3 divided by a half, it's like multiplying it by the reciprocal of that fraction. Okay, so 3 divided by a half, is the same as 3 times 2 over 1, which is 6. So this is actually going to give you minus 6x to the power of a half plus c. So now we can find the c 
by substituting um, the values of x and y from this point. Now, the first number is always the x-coordinate. The second is the y-coordinate. Again, there's a mistake where somebody put x equals 1 instead of x equals 4. So what we can do here is we can now replace the y with 1, and we can replace the x with 4. And x to the power of a half is like the square root of x, so I'll put square root of 4 plus c. That just makes it a bit easier to think about. So you have 1 equals, that's a half times 16, which is 8, minus 6 times 2, which is 12, plus c. So now we can say that uh, 1 is equal to minus 4 plus c. Therefore, c is equal to 1 plus 4, which is 5. So now we can write our equation in the correct form, a half x squared minus 6x to the power of a half. And now we've got plus 5, and that is our answer. Okay, so that's what you get the marks for in this question. So first of all, you have to show that you've integrated, right? So this step should be there. You must simplify. You know, you can't leave it in as 3 over a uh, half. And then you must substitute x as 4, y as 1 into the equation. And you can find what y is. Okay, so that's the answer to this question number 1. Now, there's an alternative way that will come in really handy when you're doing P3 later on, okay? Um, of integrating this and um, you know what we might be a bit um, jumping a bit of a step for some of you guys but it's good for you to get introduced to it now so um, what I'm going to explain is taking this you know, you know thinking about this in a slightly um, advanced way all right so I'm going to do the same question again but in a slightly different way which will you'll appreciate later on uh, better for most of you so this actually is known as what's called a differential equation, okay? When you have dy dx in an equation, you know, and you want to solve that equation, basically you have to write it as y equals some function of x. y equals some function of x. That's what you have to do. So solving this equation is what you do when you write it as y equals something, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both of the sides of this equation, with respect to x. So you have dy dx, dx, I'm integrating this side of the equation with respect to x. I'll also integrate this side of the equation with respect to x. So I have x minus 3x to the power of minus a half, dx. I'm integrating both of these sides with respect to x. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So you can think of that these things cancel out, and you're left with the integral of basically 1 with respect to y on this side equals the integral of x minus 3x to the power of negative a half with respect to x. Now, what we can do here, we can do something quite clever. We can think about this in terms of like, we're trying to find what y is in terms of x. We're trying to find y in terms of x. And in, in, in the answer has to be y equals some function of x. And we know that when y equals 1, when y equals 1, we know x equals 4, because it goes to the point 4. 1. Okay, so now we can integrate this now as a definite integral, which we learn about in P1 of um, Cambridge. And that way we don't have to put the plus C. The C will automatically be found for us. So when I integrate this side with respect to Y, I'm going to get Y. And then I have my limits of Y and 1. When I integrate this side, side with respect to X, this one is going to be integrated with respect to X. Okay, I get exactly what we did before. X squared over 2 minus 3x to the power of a half divided by a half. And I got my limits as x and 4. So now, let me just get this ready first. So this is y and 1, and this is equal to, this is a half x squared minus 6x to the power of a half. And I got my, my limits of x and 4. So now when I put my values in, I'll have y minus 1 equals, because you can put y in, and then you're going to subtract what you get when you put 1 in for these definite integrals. And then I'm going to put x in here, so it will be exactly the same as it is, x, half x squared minus 6x to the power of a half. Then I'm going to put 4 into here, so I have minus, don't forget the bracket, a half times 4 squared. So it's a half times 4 squared minus 6 times the square root of 4. Okay, so you have y minus 1 equals a half x squared minus 6x to the power of a half, and this is going to be minus, 
that's going to give you um, 8 minus um, 12, that's minus 4. So you have minus minus 4. So you end up with y minus 1 equals a half x squared minus 6x to the power of a half plus 4. And then you can add 1 to both sides. So you end up with y equals a half x squared minus 6x to the power of a half plus 5. All right, now personally, in a question as simple as this, I would normally use the first work method that I used, but I'm just showing you an alternative method where you can not have, you know, you not have to write plus C. You can use like these definite integrals. So you can say that, you know, I know that when Y, I want to find out Y is in terms of X, so you put them on the same level. I know when Y equals one, X equals four. And when you integrate with those limits, you get exactly the answer without having to write the plus C. Okay, so it kind of finds out the plus C for you automatically. All right, so that's an alternative way of answering this question. I wouldn't expect students at the level of P1 to do it in this way, but it's like maybe a little introduction to you of what might come later on, especially when we do P3, um, more solving of differential equations when we come to integration then. But um, this is, uh, you know, just a little taster for that, for those of you who might be interested. So that's the answer to question number one. Um, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here when you've, uh, at the end of the video. Other questions from integration of uh, P1 from Cambridge will be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and um, the video um, that explains how to use my channel to find what you're looking for will be linked at the top of the, at the end of this video here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.